lot of cookie cutters out here, and those are those like 34, 35, 36 inches. Cookie. 34, 35, 36 inches. Yeah, those are cookie cutters out here. <laughs> so when they hit, we should have a couple of clubs. A lot of. We're going to break a record today, you know why? Why? Right. I'm going to catch a 20 inch. I did the second time I got it. That's, that's a record. Oh, 20? 20 inch. That's oh. what I'm aiming for, man. If I catch a 20 inch muskie, that's. that's 20 inches, man. We, we call those stockers out here. Ever. That's crazy. You get, to, you get to answer this question for me. Educate. So, educate everybody else, too. So. You have to tell me the difference between a muskie and a pike, because I don't know the difference. Because Absolutely. we don't have muskie. Well, we, we're introducing them, but pike, no. You got to tell me the difference. What's, what's the distinguishable feature in the two? Tell you or show you when we're out there. Show me. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get a chance to show you. All three tails are moving, and that moves water, it displaces water. So when I say you, know, you can catch a blind muskie because they can feel the displacement in the water. Just like when you're in an airplane and you hit a real big bump, and the pilot says, you just hit a, we just hit a wake of another plane. The same thing in the water, so every time you're ripping a bait through the water, it leaves a trail of the water getting displaced, and the fish will feel that, and they'll come chase it. So we're ripping it like this to try to draw strikes. And uh, here's an example of what it looks like. So when it hits the water, we're in 20 feet of water, right? The fish that we're seeing are sitting down closer to maybe 16 to 18 feet of water. So this sinks at a rate about one foot per second. So count it down like eight or nine seconds. And kind of play with your cadence a little bit. You know, you don't always want to do the same, you know, pull, reel up, pull. Just kind of play with it a little bit, make it a little bit different. Go erratic, sometimes slow it down. Sometimes these fish will come in real low under your bait and you won't even see them until you're about to pull the bait out of the water and all of a sudden you just see this big brown log kind of slowly emerging from the bottom of the lake. You'll know when you see a fish, boy, it gets you so jacked. It's really, it's, it's why we musky fish. It's so exciting. I mean, I can remember follows that I had years ago because, you know, the fish was that big and it was... You know, it really stuck to my memory that much because of it. There's people out there who like to fish to catch fish, and there's people that like to fish for other reasons, but at the same time, we, like, we all like to catch fish. But when you get into musky fishing, you're not doing it because you expect to catch a fish every time. That's just not ever going to be the case. Might have to move to Wisconsin, huh? Uh, stick around. Yeah, a lot of the lakes and the whole lake country area and where we're at, southeast Wisconsin, um, are named after, you know, they're kind of like Native American names or words. Yeah. Um, we have some that are French, like Lac La Belle, uh, Okachi Lake, and Oconomowoc Lake. You know, those are a couple Indian sounding names. But if you ask me what they mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Remember those forever. At least that's the way it is for me. Well, this time of year when the water is a little bit warmer, I like to speed it up. Yeah, 
their metabolisms increased when the water is warmer so they can digest their food quicker uh, which means they've got a lot of energy and and they're gonna be hungry sooner after they eat you know they're gonna eat something and real soon afterwards after they digest it they're gonna be looking for another meal Four out of ten musky guys will be out, you know, fishing deeper water, fishing suspended fish because the reason I think, and I mean, everybody's got their own reasons for everything, but it's tough to be out here and you don't see any any cover underneath the boat, you don't see weeds, and a big part of musky fishing with them eating at your feet like that is looking for follows, and I think a lot of guys are real comfortable when they have weeds underneath the boat and they can see the weeds and they can watch their bait come in the whole time, right? But the thing is, when you fish shallow like that, and that's what the primary, the primarily what most of the guys are doing, those fish have already seen baits. You know what I mean? Right. You go out deep, and those fish are eating too, and they're living out there, and they're chasing bait fish that migrate all around the lake. They never get tapped into. Some of those fish have never seen a bait before. And so it's kind of like you gotta, you gotta have faith in what you're doing because you don't see your bait. You don't see any weeds, and you gotta just go with your gut or what you're seeing on your graph, and you're like, you know, you gotta just trust that you're there for the right reason, and then when you get bit, it's so it's very rewarding. drive in but otherwise we're gonna be you know creeping. Yeah you go ahead. <laughs> there you go now you got one of those cookie cutters. <laughs> Put Jerry left behind you. That's a, that's a classic you are you must be. You bag, dude. Woo! Uh-huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, sir. Look at that. On rubber, too. You got it on the Medusa. Oh my gosh. Okay. See, I got it, buddy. Yep. Did you, did you feel that jar that I was talking oh, about? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, dude, that was beautiful. She came right out of the water, too. A couple times. <laughs> you have to show me something, dude, because... How to hold it? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Are you? Yeah. Go ahead. Cookie cutter. Yeah. And you got yourself a first musky. Here's uh, what I want you to do, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, we got a still shot too. Look at that beautiful animal. Hey, buddy. What a beautiful animal. Yeah. In Wisconsin. I have never in my life imagined or dreamed that I'd ever catch a muskie. Okay, hold him up for me. All right. Got it. Alright, babe. There she goes. <laughs> Woo! Sam Mo. Alright. That's freaking awesome. What do you think, bud? Bad there. I knew we were gonna get one. I knew it. I just didn't know when. I'm glad it came now. Maybe Got that right. Bush latte for yeah, celebrations. I think you should celebrate. I go celebrate. Yeah, all these waypoints. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the 
looking to grab here and I'm looking for bait on the bottom and I'm looking for big hooks. If we see a big hook, we can usually retrace our steps, go back, drop a jig down, and we can we can damn near vex a lot of that fish, you know? So we're kind of hovering in this 18 feet and then I'm just gonna kind of zigzag in and out to like 18 to 22 feet and I'll just keep going back and forth until I see something that I like. Is this all bait fish? Yeah, it could be or it could just be like they had weed cutters out the week oh. before and they're just settling down the bottom. Uh, a picture like this that doesn't have everything just written in you know, stone for you, you gotta kind of make judgment calls. I used to have a camera. Uh, underwater camera and off of you and I would drop it down and I would learn big, that's a big fish, that's a muskie. He's, he's literally underneath us. But that fish is going to probably sit right there. We're going to dangle these things right in the thing's face and piss it off. So I'm telling you, there's nothing more exciting than this kind of strike. Just wait. You'll be like this and all of a sudden your rod is going to go whack. Wow. Look at this. Look at all those teeth marks in there. Yeah, this bait here has been chewed a lot. Uh, wow. I don't know, I've probably got five or six on this one alone. It's just, you know, it's just torn up. When they bite it on the drop, sometimes they come up to hit it, and you'll get slack lines. So you take your eyes off for one second, and you think you're digging down, and you turn around, and there's a bunch of lines floating on the surface. You gotta reel down quick and then yank on it to see if you can get it. Most of the time you're gonna miss a fish after that long, but that's what happens. You gotta be really on it. And then I real slowly and subtly drop. Sometimes I just go up a little bit, you know, and then other times I'll maybe get a little bit more aggressive. Bait down there. I can I can feel bait hitting my jig right now. The pie is a big pod. We just went over a big pod of bait, and that could be. We just stocked the lake with a bunch of small walleyes, so it could be little walleyes or perch. I can't really tell at this point. It's a musky sitting right underneath his jig. So he, you got a fish that's following your bait right now. You kind of just want to like make him stare at it to the point he's just like. Why, why don't I eat that? So it's like that last piece of pizza in the box and everybody in the room is like, well, I'm not going to eat it. I don't want to be the one to eat the last piece. Make him eat it. 